Okay, so today is what I would call one of my bad days. I've sort of woken up not feeling the greatest, haven't got a lot of sleep, my allergies are flaring up, my pain is flaring up, I haven't got out of bed yet. I'm a little worried about that because when I flare up, it's harder to uh, get out of bed, it takes more energy and effort, yeah. Every morning I take two of these. They help my pain become more manageable. I definitely notice a difference if I forget to take them. And then I take one every night. Not sure if you can see it very well, but my arms are covered in these tiny bumps. Kept me awake all night last night being really itchy. I try not to scratch them, but this is what happens when my allergies flare up. The other thing that happens when my allergies flare up is my lips get really itchy and they swell up. Um, my lymph nodes swell up and it feels like my throat's closing over a little bit. My skin is just itchy all over. I try not to scratch it, but this is what happens every year around springtime. It gets worse when the grasses come out. It's hard for me to even go outside. <laughs> me, yeah. So I'm back in bed now. I've got Minyip with me. She's eating her breakfast. She's got her perch. She's got her play area that I've just put here for every morning when I come back to bed. I do usually sit in bed for a while in the morning and she likes to spend time with me. After she eats her breakfast, she'll probably snuggle up behind my head and under my hair and go to sleep for another nap. And I'll probably just play games on my laptop which I remotely connect to my PC which is in the other room. I find it really hard to wake up in the mornings. I just don't have energy. The other thing that I've noticed is my appetite just sort of doesn't really exist but I do try to eat something or at least drink something. I've just brought in some blueberries to nibble on because I do still need to be careful with my blood sugar levels. Even though I don't feel hungry, I feel the effects of low blood sugar. So yeah, I gotta be careful with that. That's basically my morning routine with Minyip. Good girl. Gotta clean that beak. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good girl. <laughs> it is now time for me to have a shower with Minyip <laughs> and I use a shower stool for that and it does the job and I strongly recommend it for anyone with POTS because the heat from the shower will aggravate the symptoms. And she has a little perch that she sits on. <laughs> There you go, yeah. 102, and I'm just sitting in the shower. This is what happens when I stand. My heart rate is so high that I'm getting some active zone minutes. My Fitbit officially thinks that I'm exercising and I'm just standing in the shower. at this point in time where I get out of the shower and just sit just to have a rest because I'm just exhausted after my workout. <laughs> yeah, so it is a bit of a workout to just shower. So you might even be wondering why I bother shower? Well, because with POTS, I'm unable to regulate my body temperature in general, so during the night I sweat a lot and I just feel like I need to have a shower to freshen up. The other reason is because of my allergies and I just want to make sure that I'm having a shower twice a day, especially during spring because I don't want my allergies to get worse because of anything that might be touching my skin. 
yeah, and other than that, Minya loves the steam, so, you know. So, during the day, if I'm having a bit of an off day, like I am, I do like to set myself up on the recliner with the heated blanket, and that just helps relieve some of my pain. It also helps keep my legs elevated so there's not too much blood pooling or stiffness in my legs. Laying down being horizontal is one of the best things or the best positions I can be in when I'm not feeling great. Unfortunately, that's more often than not, but you know what? That's okay. So I did want to just make this video in light of Dysautonomia Awareness Month. Now a lot of people like me who have been diagnosed with POTS also have other chronic health issues. So I also have fibromyalgia which is why I get pain as well as all of my POTS symptoms. There are a few things that I probably still need to look into. For example, my allergies being as bad as they are raised some questions for me and I might have to go see a specialist about that in the future. It gets to a point when you're chronically ill where you get kind of sick of seeing specialists and chasing more answers. You sort of need a period of rest in between that to adjust and come to terms with your diagnosis in the first place. One thing that I have been thinking about is mast cell activation syndrome. A lot of people who are diagnosed with POTS also have mast cell activation syndrome so it's definitely worth looking into. There are probably several factors contributing to my flare-up at the moment including allergies and spring season but also the fact that I've been dealing with a lot of stress in the last few months and physically I have been pushing myself too much. That's something I need to be more careful with. It's a fine balance figuring out how much physical activity is too much and it's hard to know when to stop. Part of the reason for me pushing myself is this internalized ableism that I feel within myself. I should be able to do this. I should be able to do that. Most people would expect me to be able to do these things. And I internalize that. And so I push myself too hard. And so I need to get better at setting boundaries for myself. And not letting that internalized ableism get in the way of my rest. Because I do need rest. And I need to rest a lot more than otherwise healthy people do. And that's hard for healthy people to understand when they look at me. Because they don't see everything that's going on under the surface. I'm living with invisible illnesses here. A few weeks ago, there was someone in my life who decided to take it upon themselves to let me know that they think that I'm faking my disabilities. Look, with people like that, or if there's anyone in your life, if you have a chronic illness, who thinks you're just faking it, it just tells you more about them honestly because they clearly don't know you well enough they clearly don't understand your situation they're clearly ignorant about the complexities of your situation so for me when I had this person accuse me of faking it I realized well this person's never taken the time to actually understand my illnesses they've never sat down had an honest chat with me about what's going on with my health and to be honest, if they ever asked me about how my health was going, the only reason that they were asking was so that they could gain information to just then use against me. They weren't actually asking because they cared. I can tell the difference. If someone like this came up to me and said, hey Jess, how's your health going? To them I might say, oh, it's not worth getting into because I know what they'll do with that information. They'll just twist it around and in their own twisted perception of me, use it against me. So I picked up on some red flags that this person didn't actually care about me at all in any way. So I actually refrained from talking to this person about my health 
So they never actually learnt of my POTS diagnosis. They don't even know anything about this. And so they've just gone and commented on my situation and accused me of faking when they actually don't know anything about it at all. But the thing is, especially with POTS, there's no way to fake that. You have to have a heart rate increase of at least 30 beats per minute with a positional change from sitting to standing, for example. That's the diagnostic criteria for POTS. That's a measurement that can be physically taken. There's no way that I can physically alter my heart rate to falsely present symptoms, especially in an environment where I'm strapped down to a table and they physically tilt the table upwards to monitor my heart rate and what it does during that time. That's how I got my diagnosis. Some people are just so ignorant. They have no idea what they're talking about. That's where I distance myself from these people. I say, no, they're not going to be part of my life. They're not going to help me heal. They're actually going to contribute to more emotional stress in my life if I keep them around. And emotional stress can lead to more flare-ups. And here we are. So yeah, I guess I could say that my tolerance for any mistreatment towards me is at an all-time low. In fact, it's level zero. I've got zero tolerance for any mistreatment towards me lately because of how much I find it impacts my health. I've got a lot of good things going on in my life at the moment and Re and I, we have some really exciting times ahead and some really good news to share. If you follow me on my personal account on Instagram, you probably know. If you follow me on my nail art Instagram account, you probably know too. But I'm not going to say what it is because I'm not sure who's watching and I have to keep it a secret for reasons. <laughs> but we're in a really good place right now and I'm really excited about the future and yeah. <laughs> if you want to know what I do for the rest of the day, it's basically just resting and walking I do try to get 5,000 steps every day unless I'm feeling really bad or if I have a migraine I'll just avoid too much physical movement at that time. I'll alternate between walking, resting, walking, resting, get some productive things done throughout the day if I'm not having an off day <laughs> which I which I am but I still have to do things like look after Minyip and at the moment I'm bird sitting so I'm looking after a friend's bird as well. He's, he's a cutie though, he's so sweet. <laughs> I'll just uh, walk you through my nighttime routine and uh, wrap it up. So every night I take a dose of magnesium as glycinate. It's more readily bioavailable so it doesn't cause me to get sick like other magnesium tablets do. Um, the other thing is that I also take a beta blocker every night. I used to take one each morning and night, but I found that the fatigue was a little bit too much with two a day, so I've cut down to one a day. As a lot of you with chronic illnesses will know, we're already exhausted, so this can actually just take it up a notch. Got to watch those sorts of side effects with these, but otherwise it's very helpful to manage my heart rate at night because I do get those adrenaline dumps sometimes. Last time that happened I woke up and my heart rate was 167 beats per minute so that was kind of scary so this helps manage that which is great. This is Oscar. I'm bird sitting right now. <laughs> Minyip's cousin but I don't let them interact because you know they don't know each other that well. They do say hi to each other through the doorway though, so that's cute. But yeah, so I think I'll wrap up this video here. I'm just a little tired. I'll sit in bed, edit the video, keep Oscar company, <laughs> and uh, rest. Because I really just need to rest. And that's okay.
because you know what? Rest is productive. Okay, <laughs> bye. <laughs>